Winds usually reserved for summer hurricanes are now tearing across the United States, and there is no hurricane in sight. Hurricane force wind gusts are being recorded over land, in places that rarely see this level of storm. In the past hour, entire regions lost power. Roofs have been ripped away, and emergency calls are spiking as this winter storm intensifies beyond what most Americans expect. Scientists are warning the system has not reached its peak. This is not just another winter front. What happens next could redefine the season. The next 48 hours matter. National Weather Service advisories now stretch from the Pacific Northwest to the Atlantic coast, cutting across four time zones. In the last 12 hours, high wind warnings have blanketed the Northern Rockies, the High Plains, and sections of the Midwest. At the same time, winter storm warnings and flood watches overlap in the Pacific Northwest and New England. This is not a single hazard event. Multiple threats are unfolding at once. Along the border between Montana and Wyoming, gusts topping 100 miles per hour have been recorded on exposed ridges, while valleys brace for falling trees and damaged power lines. In Washington state, flood waters are rising after days of relentless rain with saturated ground turning minor creeks into dangerous torrents. Heavy snow is piling up in the Sierra Nevada and the Cascades, with some mountain passes reporting two to four feet of accumulation in less than 48 hours. Coastal regions from Oregon to Maine are under advisories for large waves and beach erosion, driven by a long fetch of wind traveling hundreds of miles over open water. In the upper Midwest, a sharp temperature boundary is triggering rapid changes, rain turns to snow within a single county, and whiteout conditions can develop in minutes. Forecasters at regional centers are tracking these hazards in real time and updating maps as the storm evolves. Each National Weather Service advisory, whether it is a high wind warning in South Dakota or a flood watch in Vermont, represents a distinct threat. The footprint of this storm is not just wide, but layered, with wind, snow, and water arriving in overlapping waves. For millions, the hazard depends on the hour and the map. This is the anatomy of an evolving, multi-front crisis. Power grids are under siege across several states. In the Mid-Atlantic and New England, more than 41,000 homes and businesses have gone dark as branches heavy with snow. Snap power lines and transformers spark against the wind. Utility crews are working through the night in Mercer County, New Jersey, where 2,000 customers lost electricity in just a few hours. In the Pacific Northwest, saturated ground and relentless rain have toppled trees onto roads and homes, complicating efforts to restore service. Emergency dispatchers in Montana and Wyoming are fielding reports of trees crashing through rooftops and vehicles pinned beneath fallen limbs. Crews describe these scenes as hazardous and unpredictable, Highways are closing without warning. Interstate 80 and Interstate 25 in Wyoming are closed to light trailers after nearly 40 blowover crashes in three days. Gusts of 123 miles per hour on South Pass and 144 miles per hour near Smoot have left truckers stranded and road signs twisted to the ground. In South Dakota, wind-driven snow and flash freeze conditions have forced schools to close, while airport departure boards in Denver and Minneapolis fill with delays and cancellations. Structural damage is mounting. In the Bitterroot Valley, mature evergreens have fallen across power lines and houses, some crushing vehicles parked in driveways. Along the coast, storm surge and pounding waves threaten piers and marinas from Oregon to Maine. Emergency services are coordinating rescues and clearing debris, but persistent winds make even basic repairs hazardous. For thousands, the first sign of trouble is the sudden silence when the lights go out, the moment when the storm's power becomes personal. The force behind these winds begins with a steep pressure gradient, a sharp difference in atmospheric pressure between the storm's center and the surrounding air. Meteorologists are tracking pressure drops of 20 millibars or more over just a few hundred miles. This gradient acts like a powerful siphon, accelerating air from high pressure zones into the low pressure core. The tighter the gradient, the faster the wind moves. Layered on top of this, the jet stream is roaring overhead. Right now, upper-level winds are clocked at over 140 knots, more than 160 miles per hour, across the northern tier of the country. When the jet aligns directly above the surface low, it acts as a conveyor belt, funneling energy down to the ground and amplifying surface wind speeds. Another factor is fetch. 
the distance wind travels over open water before reaching land. Along the Pacific and Atlantic coasts, winds have swept unbroken for hundreds of miles, building momentum and driving massive waves onto shorelines. Inland, the same mechanism accelerates air across snowfields and plains, producing gusts that rival those found in hurricanes. These ingredients, pressure gradient, jet stream, and fetch, combine to produce the kind of wind damage now being reported from Montana to Maine. This is a textbook example of physics in action, not speculation. Meteorologists rely on real-time readings from weather balloons, Doppler radar, and surface stations to monitor these forces as they evolve. The numbers confirm what is happening on the ground, extreme winds driven by the mechanics of the atmosphere itself. Forecasters are now watching a volatile window for further intensification. Model ensembles show a wide spread in the projected storm track, with some runs shifting the low pressure core up to 200 miles north or south within the next 24 hours. That uncertainty means wind maxima could shift suddenly, putting new regions at risk with little warning. Emergency managers are weighing response plans against these moving targets, knowing that even a minor track adjustment could mean the difference between a routine advisory and widespread infrastructure failure. The ground itself has become a hidden hazard. Days of heavy rain and rapid snowmelt have saturated soils from the Pacific Northwest through the Northern Rockies and into the Midwest. Soil moisture readings in these zones are running well above average for late December, some locations rivaling the highest percentiles recorded in recent years. Trees already stressed by relentless winds are now anchored in waterlogged ground. In places like Bitterroot Valley and the Wyoming foothills, a gust of 90 miles per hour is no longer just a threat to branches. It is enough to uproot mature evergreens and send them crashing onto homes, roads, and power lines. Infrastructure teams are racing to identify the most vulnerable areas. Power utilities are flagging circuits in flood-prone counties, while road crews monitor embankments where saturated soil could give way. The risk is not static. As the storm's core wobbles, the overlap of peak winds and wet ground can shift in real time. Meteorologists stress that the next 24 to 48 hours are critical. A single degree of latitude in the storm's path could decide where the most severe tree and power line damage occurs. For communities in the storm's potential crosshairs, readiness now is the only defense against what could become a cascade of failures. These storms do not cause tsunamis. Tsunamis are triggered by underwater earthquakes or landslides, not by wind or by atmospheric pressure. What people along the coast are seeing right now, large waves, flooding in harbors and storm surge, comes from powerful winds pushing water onto shore. While the results can look dramatic, especially in videos shared online, the underlying cause is completely different from a tsunami. Coastal monitoring agencies rely on a network of seismic sensors and deep ocean buoys to detect true tsunami threats. No such signals have been detected. Meteorologists and emergency managers are trained to distinguish between wind-driven surge and seismic waves. Even when storm surge floods neighborhoods or damages marinas, the warning systems remain silent unless seismic activity is detected. The real hazard along the coast tonight is the force of wind and water, not a tsunami. Hurricane force winds in winter storms are rare, but not without precedent in the United States. In late October 1991, the perfect storm drove gusts near 80 miles per hour onto the New England coast. The winds toppled trees and cut power for tens of thousands. And federal disaster declarations followed as coastal flooding and erosion lingered for days. Less than two years later, in March 1993, the storm of the century unleashed 70 to 100 miles per hour winds from Florida to Maine. That system left millions without electricity, and some communities waited more than a week for restoration. Utility historians point to these events as reminders. When winter storms reach this scale, recovery can stretch from days into weeks, especially where infrastructure faces repeated blows. Extreme wind events now test our power grids and emergency systems, far beyond their design. As winter storms grow less predictable, readiness becomes a daily necessity, not a seasonal one. The atmosphere sets new records, but our response writes the outcome. Stay alert and stay connected for updates.